When you're playing in a series like this, please, four or more, um, do, does it affect how your strategy, how you do things when you're seeing one team so often, or, does it, or is it that is not necessarily relevant? Well, I think every coach will make a little adjustment, so it's not going to be a, you know, you're not going to change how you do things, basically. But you'll make a little adjustments as you go on, and we'll see. I'm sure they'll guard something a little different than what we saw in the regular season, and we'll have to make the adjustment either during game or, or afterwards. But uh, that's why it just gets, you know, points get a little bit more stingier as you go on in the playoffs because you know everything they're doing and vice versa. The city just had a chance to sort of celebrate sports success at you know, the highest level in this country. Do you have a sense of if there's a greater anticipation for what you guys might be able to do? Because people just had all that fun. They, they know, hey, you know what it's like. You know, I don't know. It is. I, I'm, you know, Astros were unbelievable, and surely we would like to reach that pinnacle like they did. Uh, I think it would be fantastic. Uh, whether they won or not, I think it would be unbelievable. So uh, that's great they won, but I don't think it affects. Oh, oh great! Now we got to win. We we have to win anyway. So well, for you guys, right? The, for the it'd be fun for everybody. Yeah, yeah, look, if we can have another party, it'd be great. But we're a long ways from that. And we got a lot of work to do. Has the mentality shifted at all, knowing you had the top spot locked in for so long and now you're playing games that matter again? Well, I think there'll be more, more urgency, but even uh, I'm sure there's an urgency for Minnesota, too. So it doesn't matter where you came in. They're a very good team, and we're going to take one series at a time, obviously. And, and uh, we're looking forward to it. It's going to be a great competition. They're, like I said, they're good, and they can score in all kinds of different ways. So it's going to, they'll test us, and we'll have to be ready. But... You know, to win a championship, you, you know, it's a uh, lost couple months and you just got to play. And we're ready to they are so good at taking advantage of mistakes. They really score like crazy like turnovers, second chance points. Does it put a greater priority on sort of recapturing the focus that you haven't needed for a few weeks? Yes. And that's probably one of our successes that we had. I think we averaged nine turnovers against them a game and they usually create 15. So that, that's a big difference, and that's, you know, we lead about 10 to 12 different points, and that's probably the difference in the game, so we have to take care of the ball. What but did you do well in order to run your off and score a ton, but not... Just, we were efficient, we just didn't, uh, who knows, I mean, it's a short sample, uh, but we have to be aware that we just can't get careless or lose the ball, and it's got to keep our spacing and give guys opportunities to make plays without being in a crowd. Re- reputations die hard sometimes. A lot of people, including the Wolves themselves sometimes, still call them them a young team. Do they look like a young team? I don't know. <laughs> no, I don't, I don't see it at all. They're, they've got guys that have been through a lot of stuff. And, uh, no, they're, they're a good team. Well, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily say a young team. But they're young enough where they'll be together for about 10 or 15 years if they want them to. So, in a sense, it's you know it's time for everybody. Everybody makes the playoffs. There, there's not a lot of youth in there because you don't make it if you're a young kid. You make because you're a good kid. Well, you got a guy who's 37 and Todd Gibson is 32 and Butler is 28. Right. And Tibbs is up there too, so they're all. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, is there just two separate days and saw Luke practice it? Who? Luke, Luke Bobby. Is there any better read on what's going on with him? Well, I don't know if there's a better read, and uh, I do know that it wasn't. It seems not quite as bad as it was before. Not even close to being like it was before. Now, that doesn't mean he'll be back tomorrow, next week, or whatever. We're going to give him time to heal. He's got to strengthen his shoulder and be able to keep it in place. But it's a lot better than what it was the first time. Some ways that it is easier to coach in the playoffs because you have heightened awareness of your players, or, or does it? I know it's difficult for the competition. Well, it's not difficult. It's coaching all. It's, it's a lot harder when you've lost five games in a row and you're trying to get guys back on track. Uh, the playoffs got everybody's attention, everybody's ready to go. So in that sense, yes, you don't have to cheerlead. Sometimes during the year you're getting dog days and you find yourself not coaching, you're cheerleading. Not, not in the playoffs. Everybody's ready to go, so now it's just X's and O's and trying to do the best you can. It seems like people around the league have been raving about how Chris and um, James have been playing together. Do you ever have time or take a second to just sit back and marvel at how well it's worked? I know you knew it would work. Every day. You just watch them just through their production and, and what they've done, and uh, uh, they've been incredible. And uh, hopefully it just continues. Like, Why do you turn on Anthony Johnson's then? Double double machine for the Timberwolves uh-huh. season line. What? How do you solve someone like? No, he's going to get double double. <laughs> that's, that's who he is. Uh, that's how they got here, and that's how uh, they'll stay here. But uh, you have to do your thing, and you have to 
you know, James is leading scorer in the league. Well, he needs to be leading scorer, in the, you know, whatever. Um, but you are who you are. You don't stop. You don't stop guys at this level. You contain them as best you can. You give them nothing, nothing easy, and don't overreact. You can't take away everything, and uh, and certain things are staple for them, and they're going to do certain things. But. We always got to play our ball and worry about the, the Rockets. Mike, Derek Rose played pretty well against you guys uh-huh. in the last meeting. What kind of difference does he make on that second unit for Minnesota? Well, you know, he's, he's an MVP. I mean, he can play. Uh, athletically, he looks like he's back to almost normal, and uh, uh, he gives them another punch that we have to be aware of. Mike, in terms of uh, minimizing Carl Anthony Towns, is it best to run him? No, uh, nobody's minimizing him. Come on. Oh, he's trying to contain him, maybe. And we're not. He's a really talented, very talented player. But yeah, I mean, well, you know, you try to run him, but we try to do that to everybody. Try to spread him out. Yeah, we do that. Um, just try to put bodies on him. Try not to foul him. Don't give him any extra. You can take away three. Don't give him any three. We do that by switching and staying up in him. He even gets the both subs. He's going to score. That's what he does against anybody.